You fool! Warren is dead. Welcome to Horror Babble. Today, we're thrilled to present a brand new offering courtesy of our very own M.D. Vickers, Satnav. It's all in the title, folks. We hope you enjoy it. Satnav by M.D. Vickers Normally you read stories about things that have, shall we say, supernatural properties, and they're more often than not second-hand, charity shop purchases, etc. Well, my story flies completely in the face of that. As far as I knew, it was brand new, certainly looked it, and it actually happened. I needed to write it down, to just get it all out there on paper, to hopefully help unburden myself a little. I still re-read it and doubt myself that it actually did happen, but here it is anyway. I used to like map reading whenever I needed to go to unfamiliar places. Then I heard about satnavs and kind of got a little curious. A work colleague had one and absolutely loved it, jokingly calling me a dinosaur when I insisted you couldn't beat the old ordnance surveys. Despite my comments to the contrary, I went online one day and had a peruse. Not gifted with much patience, I'd only looked at a few before I got a little intrigued by one in particular, for no discernible reason. Within my price range, which wasn't a huge amount. Good write-up. No reviews yet, however. It was silver with a fairly big screen. Coming all the way from China, though. Still, what was the rush? I had my maps till then. The impulsive part of my nature took over, and I clicked purchase without further thought. The transaction then took place without incident, followed shortly after by an email confirming said purchase. Oh, how I wish I could turn back the clock! The sat-nav arrived about a month later. I was quite excited as I delved into the packaging to pull it out. It looked slightly different than it had done online, but not too much so. Bright silver. There was no booklet containing instructions, which was rather irksome. Not much on the box, either. A charger was in there, though, by the looks of it. I turned the sat-nav around in my hands before pressing the inlaid button on top. Nothing for a moment or two, then the logo came on, followed by the intro screen. Then... blackness. I panicked a little, before realizing it probably needed a charge. I plugged it into the nearest outlet, waiting for a light to appear to show it was properly charging, which it did. Then, after making myself a coffee, I set about tidying the garage, which I'd been putting off for at least a year. Procrastination was one of my many strong points. The following Sunday was the anniversary of my mum's passing twenty-one years ago. I planned on visiting her grave, like I did every year. I tried persuading my dad to join me many times, with no result. He was quite happy just blotting it all out with weed, alcohol, prescription drugs, you name it. How he was even still alive was a miracle in itself. He was seeing someone at the moment, someone he'd met at an AA meeting, one of the only two he went to. I didn't get on with her, she was nearly as much of a mess as he was. When the fateful day came round, I decided to christen the sat -nav even though I obviously knew the short drive perfectly well. I dug it out of the glove box and plugged it in before fastening it to the windscreen and turning it on. I banged a ninety CD in, then got some Babylon Zoo going with their bizarre classic, Spaceman. The sat-nav cycled through the intro screens, then asked me for a destination. I googled the postcode for the road where the cemetery was and keyed it in. I pulled out of the drive and set off, the male voice giving me the directions I didn't need. I called in at Sainsbury's for a decent bunch of flowers before arriving there. The day was overcast, but not particularly cold. I parked on a side road nearby, and clambered out, remembering to pick up the flowers on the passenger seat and turn off the sat-nav. Making my way there, 
I drank in the solace, the awe of death hitting me like it always did. Tilted, mossy stones, each life a mere tick on the clock of eternity. I saw no one liked it that way. I arrived at my mum's headstone, always kept tidy. I visited a few times in between anniversaries, too, and replaced the flowers. Some birds twittered indifferently. I crouched, reading the wording on the stone again, part of the ritual. I let the memories return. I was only fourteen when she died. Hearing the horrific news had filled my entire body with what felt like cold shards of glass. So senseless. The wheels of fate turning with their devastating randomness. She hadn't been perfect. Come on, she was human. But I loved her all the same. Still missed her baking every Saturday morning. Not so much the smell of wine on her breath, though. I stood, my knees firing twin rifle reports. There were no tears any more, just a melancholia that passed in its own time. I gently placed the flower wrapping in a bin nearby, and sat down on a bench for a while, chasing my thoughts. After half an hour or so, I slowly made my way out. The clouds had gone darker, matching my mood, I guess. I got back to the car and slid behind the wheel, sat staring for a bit, still deep in thought. Then, mechanically, I turned the sat-nav back on. Nothing for a few seconds, then all of a sudden there was a tremendous blue flash from the screen that absolutely blinded me, and sent my heart into a racing gallop. I panicked instantly, blinking rapidly, shouting, Fuck! over and over. I kept blinking, flashes ingrained on my retinas. I could see the interior of the car faintly, though. Thank God! Thank God! My heart whammed and thudded. My head throbbed. I put my hands to my temples, carried on blinking. Very slowly, the flashes were lessening. I glimpsed the sat-nav, awaiting my instructions. Seemingly everything fine with it now. What the hell had that been? I waited, trying to breathe deeply. I was getting some semblance of normality back, still trembling all over, though. I turned the ignition, then clicked on the radio to help calm me down, finding the classical station, still breathing deeply. My vision was gradually restoring itself. I needed to get home. Double whiskey required. No more than that, though. I waited there about ten more minutes, the sat-nav now indicating the direction of home. I slowly did a three-point turn to point me in the right direction. The flash is still there when I blinked, but— not severe enough now to render me unable to drive. I rolled slowly to the end of the road, and that's when things began to become very surreal very quickly. I turned right, my subconscious impression of things filtering through to my consciousness as I was doing so. Things weren't right, not at all. Adrenaline dumped into me again as I approached the traffic lights. Blockbuster video was opposite me on the corner. My brain skewed horrendously. Anxiety filled my throat. That could not be. Blockbuster video had closed down years ago. There were people inside, perusing the shelves. I felt sick to my stomach. My heart was thudding and whamming again. I glanced frantically in my rearview mirror. There was a car approaching— I, I knew little about cars, but enough to know this looked somewhat dated in appearance. Wait, it wasn't slowing down. What the fuck? I prepared myself for a collision, but felt nothing. Felt nothing because the car—this is insane, but absolutely correct—the car slid into me. I sat there, numb with horror. I saw smoke from the cigarette the driver was puffing on, the driver who was sat a few inches in front of me in his car, in my car. The lights changed. He moved off, became solid again. Or so it appeared to me. No doubt he had been all along. It was me that wasn't. I put shaking feet on the pedals, and moved off myself. This phenomenon repeated itself numerous times on my nightmare journey back. Traffic driving straight through me. Cars, vans, a couple of lorries. 
I passed who I was sure was Bert Stiles, clutching a co-op bag full of shopping. He'd been dead at least a decade. I drove past the spot where a McDonald's outlet should have been, but wasn't. And all the while, the sat-nav was pointing me home as if everything was just fine and dandy. I made a connection between the flash from the sat-nav and this that was happening. But that didn't alleviate the utter terror I was going through. A seizure brought on by it, maybe? I felt no physical pain on my apparent journey through the past. My headache had alleviated. It was entirely mental. There was an undercurrent of nostalgia, for sure, but it couldn't compete with the dismaying feeling of me absolutely having lost my mind. Ahead of me, cars were slowing down. Unperturbed, I drove straight through them. May as well get home as quickly as I possibly could. I reached for the sat-nav to switch it off, but for some reason hesitated. Something had happened here. People were climbing out of their cars, shouting, screaming. My car crawled nearer. In the distance, I heard a siren. There was someone draped over the railings at the side of the road. Groceries were scattered everywhere. Horror struck. I stopped the car and climbed out. People ran through me towards the body. "'She's dead! Gotta be!' someone yelled. "'I—I just didn't see her. She stumbled straight out in front of me!' Another voice. I was approaching the woman at a blood-stained, crooked angle on the railing. There was a familiarity. I reached out to touch her. My hand went straight through. "'Don't move her!' someone yelled. I turned, thinking they were talking to me, but he was turned to someone else who was walking towards us. The siren was getting louder. Plenty people gathered now, a lot from neighboring houses and the local pub. I walked through the railing and squatted down. Her hair was hanging down over her face. But I knew. I knew. A feeling of horror so crippling overwhelmed me, and I fell back onto the path, sobbing and screaming. The ambulance had arrived. More sirens also in the distance. You were speeding! You must have been! Christ, look how far she flew! A feeble voice, fraught with fear and sorrow, returned. I wasn't. She must have, must have stumbled out the pub. Didn't even look. I braked. I braked. He broke off with a teary sob. I shakily stood up and looked across at the man who had killed my mother. A cyclone of emotion swirling through me. The paramedics were out, dashing over, carefully lifting her down. Examination, equipment out. But of course, she was dead. I looked down at her on the stretcher, her legs at funny angles, hips smashed. Her face, though, somehow seeming at peace, even through the bloodied mask, released from her demons. Or so I was convincing myself. I squatted and kissed her forehead, my lips just kind of hovering in and out of her skin. All the same, it was something. People outside the pub were sobbing, consoling each other. She was obviously well-liked, even if it was maybe for the wrong reasons. Always the one to get around in, etc., etc. Her body disappeared into the back of the ambulance. Two police cars had arrived. I'd seen enough. I walked back towards my car, which was half inside another, and climbed in, glancing around again at this bygone world of April the 17th, 1997. I drove through cars and people, and was home two minutes later. There was a car already in the drive, so I pulled up at the front, even though I could still have reversed in. The house looked very different. Of course it did. I reached out, and this time didn't hesitate before turning off the sat-nav. There was no flash, but I grayed out and slumped back into the seat for a while. I came round with a huge headache and a furry taste in my mouth. The car in my drive was gone. The house looked present day again. I backed the car in and switched off. I took the sat-nav off the window, and a crazy impulse made me turn it on again. 
I got nothing. Tried it again, nothing at all. Back inside, with my whiskey in hand, I plugged it into the charger with a certain apprehension. The screen remained blank. You know, I tried it on and off for about a year, and it never came on again. Not a flicker. It's back in its box in a cupboard upstairs now. I'll probably try it again at some point. Curiosity. It had impacted on me far too much to give up on it. In a way, I was hugely disappointed. I wanted more journeys into the past, albeit of a less traumatic nature. I never told my dad about it. He died by suicide three years ago. Now it's written down. I feel better. More at peace, less troubled. As a final note, I will say this, though. I think I will definitely be sticking to maps from now on. If you enjoyed listening today, be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button below. After doing so, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive new content notifications. If you'd like to support our work and receive exclusive perks, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below. To support us in other ways, see the video description for links to our Bandcamp and Patreon pages, our merch store over at Teespring, and further information relating to our releases on Audible, iTunes, and Spotify. And until next time.